President-elect Joe Biden isn't going to take office until January 20th of next year, but already we're kind of getting a little bit of a sense as to what he's going to do within the first 100 days of his presidency and what his administration is going to look like. So I want to talk through all of these things that we know as of now, the good, the bad, and then I will tell you my thoughts. So in terms of what he plans to do in the first three months, uh, he is reportedly planning a bunch of executive orders, primarily to undo Trump's undoing of Obama's legacy. So for example, Quartz reports that he's planning on a number of day one executive orders, which include a federal mask mandate, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, reinstating protections for transgender students that Trump reversed, he'll make DACA permanent, and he'll also put an end to Donald Trump's Muslim ban. Now, if he were to follow through on all of these executive orders, this is great. And I expect him to do all of these things because of course he's going to want to make sure that Obama's legacy is at least somewhat intact and anything that Trump undid to the extent that he can, he's going to want to restore that legacy. Um, the only thing that I doubt is whether or not he'll do all of this on day one, but if he does, that would be fantastic. I mean, these are all things that I expected him to do soon, but if he did all of this on day one, that would be phenomenal. Now, there's this question of um, what is going to be on his agenda. If you ask anyone who was trying to get others to support Joe Biden who were reluctant at doing so, you know, the pitch was, hey, I mean, I know you don't like Joe Biden, but he has the most progressive uh, platform that we've ever seen. Now, my response to that is, okay, Joe Biden's record dictates that he's basically a Republican. Like, maybe I'm being a little bit too unkind, but he governed as a right-wing Democrat. So why should I expect him to be any different now? Why should I expect him to follow through on these progressive policies and not just immediately betray progressives who came through for him the minute when the election is over? And apparently his campaign is saying that they're going to make good on these promises. So John Bowden of The Hill reports, President-elect Joe Biden's deputy campaign manager, Kate Bedingfield, said Sunday that the former vice president would follow through on his promise is to implement what she characterized as a progressive policy agenda. During an interview with NBC's Chuck Todd on Meet the Press, Bettingfield responded to comments from Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who told the New York Times in a wide-ranging interview that many activist communities who support Democratic candidates often feel left behind when politicians don't come through and fulfill their promises. I think Vice President Biden campaigned on an incredibly progressive and aggressive agenda, Bettingfield said on Sunday, before pointing to the campaign's plans to tackle climate change developed with advice from supporters of Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential bid, including the New York Congresswoman. He's going to make good on those commitments, she continued. I mean, we, you know, he spent time during this campaign bringing people together around this climate plan. He was able to get the endorsement of groups like the Sunrise Movement and the endorsement of labor for this plan. It's a big, aggressive plan, Bettingfield continued. It's a perfect example of the kind of, you know, big effort that he is going to make to meet this moment and to meet these crises that we're in. Now, to that I say, great, but don't tell me. Show me. I'm not going to inject any hopium into these veins until I see it. Because here's the thing, I don't think I'm being unfair to be incredibly cynical about Joe Biden because he has had a history that has been consistently conservative. So, I mean, to believe that Joe Biden is going to govern in even a slightly progressive way means he's going to have to undo a lot of his past policies. Now, that'd be great if I'm proven wrong. I would love to come out on camera and say, I stand corrected here. Joe Biden was right about this. This is a good policy. I will give him credit where it's due. But here's the thing. I worry about people taking him at his word here and taking the campaign at their word here because if you say, look, the election's over and we're still saying we're going to deliver, so please trust us, because when you tell voters that they should, you know, give you faith and have faith in you, oftentimes what that leads to is demobilization. And that's what we saw after Barack Obama was elected. Everyone had faith that he would follow through with his progressive agenda. And that didn't happen. He did not deliver. He was a colossal failure. And to the extent that he was successful, it was on these executive orders that Joe Biden is probably going to uh, introduce. So... I'm not just going to say, oh, well, that's fine. Let's give Joe Biden a break because they're saying, you know, the election's over and we're, we're still not betraying you. No, 
Don't tell me. Fucking show me. Show me. Okay? Because I am not going to let my foot off the gas at all. We are not going to get off of Joe Biden's back. We're going to hound him nonstop. And to the extent that we will be able to push him left, which I don't think is possible, we're going to apply nonstop pressure on him. Because we know that the minute Joe Biden is influenced by individuals who do not have our best interest, there's a very high likelihood that he's going to flip. Now, what we're seeing from individuals who might be part of his cabinet indicate that this is going to be the case. Now, Politico detailed people who he is currently considering for cabinet positions, and I'm not impressed, to say the least. So this includes individuals like Susan Rice for Secretary of State, who's terrible, uh, Chris Murphy, a corporate Democrat who supported a coup in Venezuela. They also include Elizabeth Warren as a contender for Treasury Secretary, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're considering Doug Jones for attorney general for whatever reason, or DNC head and human clown Tom Perez for attorney general. For transportation, he is reportedly considering human garbage can Rahm Emanuel. Uh, for commerce, corporate Democrat Clinton ally Terry McAuliffe is being considered. Uh, who knows why? Uh, for agriculture, right-wing Democrat Heidi Heitkamp, who lost her Senate race in 2018, is being considered. And Bernie is apparently being considered for labor secretary. I don't think this is actually true, and I don't want Bernie to be labor secretary, so um, we'll see about that. And, you know, we have ghouls like Pete Buttigieg who are being considered for veterans affairs. So let me just say, Pete Buttigieg is never going to go away. And the thought of him running for election every four years is nauseating, but I'm not going to think about that right now. But in terms of like these cabinet picks, I mean, the progressives that he has listed, even if you want to call Elizabeth Warren a progressive, which maybe she's a spineless progressive, but I don't really consider her an ally at this point. But I mean, regardless, the progressives that he put on here, I'm pretty sure he's doing this just to placate us. We'll see. I mean, this is all speculation. I will reserve judgment for the final cabinet list. But ask yourself this. When all these people are in Joe Biden's ear, individuals like Rahm Emanuel, do you honestly expect him to follow through on a progressive agenda? No. So when, you know, we hear stories about how Biden's campaign team is going to follow through on their progressive policies, like, I want you to understand this is mostly meant to demobilize you. And I know that it might sound like I'm being too cynical, but with how much is on the line, with how much is at stake, we can't afford to not be cynical. We can't afford to give Joe Biden a pass and trust him when he's let us down countless times. If we trust him, demobilize, remove the pressure on him, he's going to betray us. So don't, don't just accept that they're going to follow through because you're going to be disappointed. You have to apply constant pressure on Joe Biden. Again, we can celebrate that Donald Trump was defeated, but Joe Biden is not our ally. He may be better than Donald Trump, but he is someone who we will have to fight. And he is going to do good things. And I intend on giving him full credit for anything good that he does. But I need you to understand there are going to be things that he does that are going to be bad because the people around him are going to instruct him to do bad things. So, you know, it's a good sign, certainly, that he's signaling that he will follow through on certain progressive policy proposals, at least when it comes to climate change, but we need more than a promise and a reaffirmation that you're going to follow through. We need you to follow through and actually do it, not just tell us you're going to do it. So, you know, what we're seeing here from Joe Biden at first, you know, it, it seems if he follows through these executive orders immediately, that's great. It will improve, you know, millions of lives immediately if he does all of this. But again, don't take all of this as him, you know, turning a new leaf and being progressive. Like, he he doesn't get a pass. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. He's Joe Biden. He's done so much harm and damage that we can't afford to trust him. And I hope that people don't take that away from, you know, these articles where, you know, his, his staffers are saying, oh, trust us, we're going to be progressive. Don't trust them. You can't afford to trust them. You have to gear up to fight him because he's not going to follow through on anything unless we fight him and we have to fight him hard. And to the extent that we can pressure him, we have to try because uh, he is a ghoul and, you know, he's he's going to do damaging things. So we have to stop that and make sure that he actually does follow through on some of these campaign promises. Don't take his word for it. Force him to actually follow through. You know... 
you 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 know you know the you know the thing thing you're getting nervous man, man.